is Carola Hein. I'm in the Chair History of Architecture and Urban Planning at TU Delft and I'm the leader of the Port City Futures team. I'm uh, Paul Vendelaar. I'm from the Erasmus University and I have an endowed chair in urban history. So I'm an historian. My name is Sabine Luning. I'm an anthropologist. I'm an associate professor at the Institute of Cultural Anthropology in Leiden. And together with people from Delft and Rotterdam and Leiden, we are in this project, Port City Futures. This is the old, the old city, the old port. When the port and city were very tight, and now they actually decided in the 1870s, we crossed the river. So the river became, well, so to say, you had to cross the river in order to develop this area. Mm -hmm. And this became the most important transit point of the development of the port of Rotterdam. And transit, not just of goods, but also of people. So that's why the Holland America line has become such an important icon for the city of Rotterdam, because actually it connects Rotterdam to crossing the ocean to the Americas. And the interesting thing is that trade follows ideas. So we brought the passengers towards uh, the United States, and then we brought the ideas from the United States back to Rotterdam. So a lot of the ideas on modernization were actually important through these major shipping lines. So this is a place which actually connects history, it connects the people, but also ideas on urban planning as well. But today is a tourist attraction. And tourists of all over the world, they arrive there now with the cruise vessels. So it is the only place in Rotterdam where big ships really enter the ports. So it's a place of nostalgia in a way. So this is a very iconic spot in order to tell you all the different narratives of Rotterdam. And that's why they want to develop uh, a new museum there on the transnational migration over there. What sort of terminology do you associate? Do you choose for gentrification or is there another way of talking about these making of futures? What do planners do with this sort of large interventions in social lives that bring new futures? So I think it's a really interesting discussion that we're having because either you talk about gentrification or you talk about urban revitalization. It always depends on which side you're on, what you want to promote. So a planner might say we want to get more life, more young people, uh, innovative people, creative people into an area that also have a higher income with the goal of revitalizing the city. If you look from the perspective of the people who are already living there, you will call it gentrification. But the, the question, I think that's a key question also for Port City Futures, how can we bring those discussions and those debates together? How can we help people to cross the divide that is often existing between these different dialogues and between these different different approaches. But I wanted to come back to a couple of points that Paul made before, because what's so particular also about port cities is the existence of water. And you have to keep the water out, channel it in some ways, control it, but you also want to cross it. And the story of when do you build a bridge, when can you build a bridge, which bridge helps you, which bridge connects, which bridge facilitates. Because coming back to our question, the fact that you can now go from Kartendrecht to the other side very quickly, you're right in the center of the city, makes this much more important real estate than it was before. And Paul made a great point about cruise ships. Now we have these huge cruise ships in the city of the center, and for many people they are the last remnants of having ships, of having these great vessels in the center. So they transmit an idea, a maritime mindset. We want to belong, we want to maintain our maritime culture. Because all the other ships are somewhere out there in mass flux, they are too big, nobody sees them anymore. So in that sense, the cruises are really important, but they also often raise questions about environmental pollution. Mm -hmm. So many ports now have electric outlets so that the, the ships can plug in there and don't pollute while they're um, 
on in the city. So all of these questions need to be handled and how we negotiate between these different positions, between the different stakeholders, finding tools to bring them together. I think that's at the heart of what we want to do in Port City Futures.